Carl Brown from Chapel Motorsports here with Paul Weber from Climb. Now, Paul is the mad scientist when it comes to finding the most protective and the most technical gear to put into the Climb line of apparel. Now, to right now, we're going to be talking about D3O armor and another neat product called Poron XD. Now, Paul, I've been using D3O in garments for many, many years now. I started out with there was only a level one, and then there was a level two. And then you had that Zergo that came out that was super more protective than the earlier versions. Yep. So tell us a little about D3O. Get us behind the side okay. of the matter. So what D3O is, it's really a shape change material. So the whole concept is, is in a lab or in the real world, you're riding along, all of a sudden a branch reaches out and stabs you or hits you. Mm -hmm. It's about reducing the kilojoules. So like the test, you know, it's on a rig, you drop it from several meters high. And when it hits, if you didn't, if you put your leg over it, it'd break your femur. Right. pretty regularly now the concept is you're still going to get a deep bruise you're still going to get some soft tissue damage but you're not going to sever any bones but you know it can still happen so you got to be careful what you say however <laughs> the reality is is like we got some simple tests here to kind of show like what happens with it this is kind of like the building blocks of d3o one of my favorite ones is you know, you build this around your fin finger then you get your wrench out and you can, you know, you're like, hey, that, that would have hurt. <laughs> or you're like, okay, what happens if I hit this thing super hard when it's in a, in a spike? So it should like almost crack and get rigid. Whereas if I just push it slow, it goes right through. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's kind of the concept of the D3O. Now, well, I've been using D3O for years. And yeah. Prior to that, I was wearing CE rated armor. Yes. Which was more of a pad that had a hard shell plastic outer mm -hmm. piece. Now, I've been in multiple motorcycle accidents throughout the years, on road and off road. And I can tell you, every big get off that I had with a traditional CE piece of armor, I ended up not breaking things, but I was always bruised afterwards. Wearing D3O, that's completely stopped. I mean, I could fall off the adventure bike onto the craziest, gnarliest, rockiest stuff, and I'm sore the next day, but I'm not bruised. And that's really, I think that's phenomenal. Hmm. I mean, the, the protection that you get in the hips and the knees and the jacket, you have it in the back, the shoulders, the elbows, any impact area, you throw the D3O in there, and your chances of getting hurt drop dramatically. My goal is not to wreck, but you're right, right? <laughs> it happens, you know, in the worst unexpected moments. Uh -huh. so, the goal is to continue to improve. This is a this is last year's level two mm -hmm. uh, C rated, but the problem is is this is rated for level two in cold and ambient, but it doesn't pass hot. And mm -hmm. so even D three O, like one of our goals is when we went out and did our full testing, and we have you know we have time out for one second. So D three O is rated for their levels based on temperature as well. All C rated. No. All C E level protection is rated by its temperature. Most people just advertise the ambient temperature. However, if you're at 100 degrees, 104 degrees is the hot standard, therefore Death Valley, a lot of California, a lot of Mexico, your rating is gone. And so the, the reality is you have to figure out what works. So when we did this Aero Pro, one of our goals was to make sure like, hey, we also know what effect, you know, this base layer has of keeping you cool, but the whole system. So first thing we looked at was, you know, perforation so if you look at the old versus the new there's a lot more perforation huge difference That's in the amount of airflow that comes through also the amount of protection but the key for me is <clears throat> when you look at the ratings on this you now have just a straight two we don't have to call out hot medium or cold because this passes everything That's awesome. and so the reality is our customers you know I can sleep better at night because I'm sending people out in the world with a far tougher, better product. And this was a great project. This is something that we own the molds of. We worked with E3O, use their technology, but it was a great project because we were able to work with a great partner, but we pushed each other. Like mm -hmm. the original hypothesis was there would be no way to get this amount of venting. But the reality is these skins actually help it when you when the when it gets rigid across, it stops. And so in the testing, this oh, is testing far better than what they expected. Mm -hmm. And so now what we have is a product that nobody else has on the market that Climb owns the, the molds of. And so now it gives us the competitive advantage. And I, again, my, my daughter's right. She goes down, I want her to be in this, not in some other C level one rating. Right. <laughs> you know, this is level two, hot, hot uh, cold and ambient. And that's what we really like about Climb is that every year they go back to the drawing board. Okay, what worked this year? What could use improvement? What already works amazing, but we can prove it even more. And that's that's really, really cool. Another 
impact absorbing material that yep. uh, I first saw in the tail pad of the yep. tactical shorts and then in the knuckles of some of the gloves yep. that you guys produced is a material called Poron XD. While it's still impact absorbing, it always stays flexible. It doesn't have that energy yeah. transfer yep. that D3O has. Can you explain us a little bit more about that and kind of how that you know, works? And I think this is the challenge for Climb Lake because you know, our partners, of course, they don't want us to use something across the board. And if it's the best for the end use, that's mm -hmm. what we'll do. And, and the question is, you know, why do you use different materials? It's because of the application. So what you just mentioned is the perfect explanation. Below 50 degrees, D3O actually tests better the colder it gets. Mm -hmm but all of a sudden it feels like a two by four super and it's super rigid. So from sleeping at night, you're super confident because you're like, this stuff is safe, but it's not what you're buying. You're buying comfort. Now the reality is pour on at cold temperature still performs the same. And so it, not only the, the functional of an impact, but also how comfortable it is. So this is just a typical EVA and you can tell it's virtually double the thickness. Mm -hmm. And so what I want you to see is the difference in the force as it rebounds and bounces Whoa. versus, you know, it's a lot deader and the more solid a surface the the better so we'll do that again on a bench test here to show you but you can obviously see bounce versus deadening so that so this is the typical material that you would find in most of the back pads yep. that are not um that's d3o most other manufacturers they usually skimp on the back pad which is a really weird place to skimp yeah. if you ask me but it, it's a challenge because you're always trying to provide the best value to the customer, mm -hmm. but at the same time, what we've decided to climb is we have to have the best product. So nice. like, you know, when you ride, you ride with your friends, you ride with your family. Am I gonna let somebody that I really care about get something on that I know isn't the best for the end use? And so it really comes back to that confidence of end users. I mean, we ride with our best friends, so we wanna make sure they're safe. So Paul, in that evolution of D3O and the evolution of pour on and finding new best materials to use, how do you guys do that? You know, a lot of times it's what we call redneck tests, but occasionally <laughs> that isn't. They are based in Idaho, so yeah. that makes total sense. <laughs> it does. Tell, after, after you arrive, you'll totally get yeah, it. Right. Right. At the time that right before we spent all the money on these tools so we could have our own product, we wanted to validate to ourselves that D3O is still the best building block for absorbing impact for the weight and thickness. So if you would have been finding, if you would have found a different material, not D3O, yeah. this may not be known in the motorcycle industry. And that was the problem with D3O to begin with, right? right. We brought it out, but everyone knew CE rated typical armor. Right. No one knew what D3O was or what it did. So people were kind of skeptical to begin with. So you're saying that if you would have tested a bunch of other materials and found a different material that wasn't known in the industry, you still would have gone that route if it performed better? That's our responsibility to our customer. Our okay. responsibility is to find the absolute best product and building blocks and then bring that to them. So what we did is we bought, we invested $30,000 in everything in every market that we could think of that was already in the motorcycle market and maybe wasn't in the motorcycle market. From all our competitors, we brought those to California, to ACT Labs, and we did a full on third party analysis of all of those pads to see where they stacked up. And then we backed into the thickness to, to weight ratio to figure out what was the best. And that that's the kind of research, like it can't always be redneck, occasionally you gotta, <laughs> but you wouldn't believe how, how much you can learn just by dropping a rock on your foot. It kind of sounds stupid. <laughs> Well, that's super impressive, Paul. So yeah. the fact that you guys really dig in deep to find the best materials to be able to use in specific mm -hmm. garments. Now, I've seen some garments use the more technical D3O, some garments still use the older style D3O, and some garments use the Poron XD. How do you choose which material goes into which application? A lot of it depends on the end use for a customer, what he's going to be doing with that product. If you're in a Badlands garment and you're going to be in variable speeds all over the world, you really need to have the, you know, the Aero Pro that has the most coverage, best ventilation, and then the best product for that end use. So real quick, before we go any further on that, so you're talking about Badlands Pro, yeah, best ventilation, and of course, the reason that this particular pad yeah. was invented. So the Badlands Pro uses a Gore-Tex Pro shell. That Pro shell vents 30% better than any standard Gore-Tex. And we'll get to Gore-Tex here in a minute. But that's the thing, if you're putting this super technical Gore-Tex Pro material in a garment and then covering it with something that doesn't vent, you're kind of defeating the yeah. purpose. Versus if, you know, obviously you've gone this route, mm -hmm. so this vents way better than any other D3O pad on the market. Hence the reason you guys created your own yeah. climb branded, climb owned. Exactly. Molding. That's 
impressive. And that's why it was worth it. And it all goes back to the end customer. You know, one of the things that we've been doing from the beginning, whenever we heard about somebody that had been in an accident or some kind of crash, mm -hmm. we would do everything we could to have our development, our product line management, get in touch with them personally, talk to them. Over time, that's now been kind of boiled down. We have a formal program, the Crash Protection Guarantee. Pretty epic. If you go down in Climb Gear and have a police report, you send the police report and the garment back, and they will send you a brand new garment, the same, the same or the current version right. of that garment. But the reality of what that's done is it's given us data from you know 20 plus years of data as we've continued to have all kinds of different accidents, whether it be on snow or road or off road, and we can we have the data logged. But the reality is, as you start to see the application of what they're doing and what failures you had, and interesting, and that just allows us to continue to be better. And it's all about figuring out from what we've done, even though we think this year's the best, next year's gonna be better. And that's 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 a challenge, but it's that's the fun part. And there you have it, Paul Weber, the mad scientist, is just giving his detailed breakdown of impact protection and why Climb does what they do when they're choosing which level of impact protection to put in the garments that you're purchasing. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to these videos if you like the content that we're providing here. Until next time, take care and ride safe.